I love these old perfect handle style screwdrivers. I had been looking for a while for one in bad enough shape to justify me replacing the wood handle scales. I picked this one up for a dollar at the May Jacktown flea market. The wood scales were in bad shape and the shank had a bend to it. I decided to chisel out the most damaged wood scale to get a better look at the rivets. I wanted to be able to preserve the other scale to serve as a pattern. I used my Dremel to cut off the rivet heads. My thumb looks like it is in more danger than it actually was. Here's the screwdriver disassembled. It's interesting that the holes were slotted. The forging wasn't perfectly symmetric. The scale only fit on one side. This was something I would need to be mindful of. I soaked the forging in evaporust overnight. The next step was to straighten the bends. I was able to straighten the forging by clamping it in my vise and unleashing my Magdad muscles. Much improved. I went over the forging with the coarse wire wheel. There were a couple of spots that the evaporust had missed. I noticed that there was remnants of a maker's mark on the shank. Leave a comment if you recognize the name. I carefully reground the tip with my belt sander. It's easy to take off too much material or misshape the tip, so I took my time. I was very happy with my tip grinding work. The shank was deeply pitted, so I started removing material with the belt sander. The butt end on these screwdrivers is almost always deformed. Here's the forging after going through a few grades of belts. The only way I could see to remove 100% of the pitting would be to convert this to an ice pick. I then switched to hand sanding. I started off dry sanding with emery and then moved to wet and dry sanding with WD-40. I reassembled the platen and table onto my belt sander to help me in shaping the wood scales. I marked guidelines on the table using the original handle scale. I had to sand a little and then check the fit repeatedly. There was also another slight angle in the forging that I had to allow for. After a lot of careful sanding, I got the wood to fit nicely. I marked the scales and forging so that I wouldn't mix them up when gluing. I used a 30 minute set clear epoxy. 
This gave me plenty of time to fit the wood and clamp up. I thoroughly cleaned the wood in forging with acetone before gluing. I let the epoxy cure for 24 hours before drilling the pinholes. Once I had the pinholes through one side, I glued the other wood scale. I know the wood seems comically oversized. This was some cherry I had left over from a kitchen install. Keeping the wood original size did help alignment when drilling the pinholes. The 40 grit Harbor Freight Belt did a great job roughing out the handle shape. This was also the first time I had attached the dust collection system to my shop vac. It worked pretty well. Once I had the handle roughly shaped, I switched to hand sanding with the grain. It took some time to get the handle shaped the way I wanted. Before installing the pins, I chamfered the pinholes. I wanted the brass to have some place to expand into. I peened the pins with the help of my tiny anvil. I was worried about cracking the wood the whole time I hammered. This pin was a little long so I filed it down before continuing to peen. This is what the pins looked like after peening. I would sand them flush as I continued to sand the handle. I want to take you back to what this screwdriver looked like fresh from the flea market. The wood was in bad shape, the shank was bent, and the tip was worn. Check out the finished product. I used a Danish oil finish on the cherry, followed by several coats of wax. And I went over the metal with my flits. Look how nice the tip came out. I really like how the wood grain of the cherry looks. The brass pins provide a nice accent. I love tools made of steel, wood, and brass. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.